Hello and welcome to this Red Gamer Tech video, myself and Marta, where today we are going to start things off with a very, very interesting leak regarding the i7 9750H and the GTX 1650. So what we have here is a slide deck having been leaked by Momomo US on Twitter, and of course a link to their tweet is going to be in the description below this video, and it has details of the i7 9750H mobility flagship. So, let's talk about the very first slide, shall we? Now, this slide is undoubtedly, at least in my opinion, the most interesting and exciting out of all of these. Not that the other ones aren't interesting, because they are, but you'll see for yourself as it's on screen that it shows that the 9750H, at least according to this slide, is going to be 28% faster than the i7-8750H, which I'm sure you would agree is pretty damn impressive. And as the image also shows that it's almost twice as fast as the i7-7700HQ, which is just insanity to be quite frank. For those of you wondering what AMD chip this is going to be facing off against, it is going to be going head to head with the AMD 3750H. So, according to these slides, the leaps and bounds that Intel have made with this is just very, very impressive. There's no other word for it, really. Now, you might have found it a little odd that in the intro to this segment, I mentioned the 9750H and this GTX 1650 in the same breath. Well, that was just simply because in this slide deck, there is also a, a bit of a leak for the GTX 1650 mobility GPU. So this slide not only confirms that, yep, the GTX 1650 is a thing that exists, it also gives off some pretty nice performance numbers. It's going to be four gigabytes and is actually going to be 41% faster than the GTX 1050 and 24% faster than the faster, excuse me, than the Thai variant. And as you can see, according to the slide, it is going to be clocked at 1395 megahertz. Now, the next slide is also to do with the 1650, and it is to do with the actual frame rate that it got in various games. Now, unfortunately, there was no mention of what resolution these games were running at, but we can see various res, res mentioned for, for example, 95 frames per second for Overwatch, and we've also got Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag at 60, Fortnite 98, GTA 5 75, PUBG at 65, I mean, you can see for yourself the results. Now, I'm sure you guys are thinking, okay, that's great, but what sort of environment were these tests being done in? We do actually have information on that, as we have the brand name and exact model number of the laptop in question, along with a few other specs as well. This is going to be the MSI GL63. And as you can see, it has 16 gigs of RAM, a 512 gig NVMe PCIe SSD, the GTX 1650 4GB, of course, and the 9750H is going to be a 90, 1080 excuse me, uh, display. So with the previous um, game, frame rates it probably most likely again was at 1080p and there is also going to be a variant for the i5 9300h as well so very very interesting stuff now of course we should take all of this with a pinch of salt because nothing is officially confirmed but this lies are looking pretty legit but you, you decide how seriously you want to take this guys Next up, we have a couple of bits from AMD, the first of which is going to be Ryzen Threadripper 3rd Generation. As what we have here is preliminary information being listed for the 3rd Gen Ryzen Threadripper, sorry, should I say Threadripper, being listed on ADA64 alongside Epic Roam server processors. Interestingly, we also see the codename Castle Peak being used here for the Zen 2 based Threadripper. Now we do also see some information being added for Intel's recently announced Xeon Platinum 9200 series, but what we're focusing on here today, of course, is the addition of Castle Peak and Rome. As for when we're expecting to see Threadripper 3000 actually come out into the market, we're expecting to see it in the second half of this year. And I'm very, very interested to see what they bring to the table, as Threadripper 2 brought some pretty nice reductions in price versus the original generation of Threadripper. But that is not the only Rome-related piece of information I have for you, no, 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 as we have another rumour regarding the specifications for 7nm Rome. So before I actually get into this topic, I just want to say that this is all based on a theory from serverthehome.com. Of course, there is going to be a link to their rather extensive article and their reasonings behind their, their sort of 
findings, I guess you could say, is all going to be there. So do give their article a read. But what do they actually suggest? Well, basically, they're saying that in a dual socket configuration, AMD Epic Roam is going to have up to 160 PCI4 lanes. So again, this is just a theory. It could be possible, but there are also rumblings and rumours that up to 192 could happen in dual configurations. And they just, I know I'm really repeating myself, but I just want to stress, this is only a theory and that we are by no means saying this is confirmed or anything like that. It is entirely possible that server the home is correct and it's also possible that we're correct it's what i'm correct should i say in terms of this theory now if this is true it would be pretty huge for amd so i am definitely going to be keeping my eyes peeled to see what actually happens here if this does turn out to be correct amd have scored a pretty significant goal in my personal opinion so we have yet more to discuss i know we have quite the jam-packed video for you today and the next up is going to be this month's report for mindfactory.de now you guys are probably familiar with this at this point because well they're monthly and this is going to be for march 2019 i know i said this month but it's still not sort of sunk in my head that it's april so apologies but essentially mindfactory.de if you're unfamiliar is one of the biggest retailers in germany and each month they give a report on the market share of intel versus amd you know, number of CPUs sold, revenue, and all that sort of stuff. And they do show some very interesting information. So what do we actually see here? And for those of you who have been keeping up to date with their previous reports, this is pretty much a continuation of the theme of AMD being in the lead when it comes to the number of CPUs sold, as you can see for the month of March we see AMD at 69% versus 31. Now, just to be clear, this is just for um, processors sold through Mine Factory, but again, they are one of the biggest, if not the biggest retailer in Germany. Now, there is another thing they look at that is very, very important to look at when you talk about who is actually in the lead, and that is, of course, revenue made from those sales. And here we do see it be a bit closer between AMD and Intel, but AMD are still in the lead. As you can see for yourself, the revenue for AMD was at 54%, and then the revenue for Intel was at 46 So much, much closer, despite the huge discrepancy in number of CPUs sold. So that just shows the sort of price difference between the two companies there. Again, this is not really surprising. This is pretty much continuing the theme of MindFactory.de's previous reports that AMD are in the lead on both fronts, but it is a bit closer when it comes to revenue in euros, but they are ahead in terms of number of CPUs sold. So yeah, if you guys have been paying attention to their previous reports, this is pretty much confirming, or sorry, continuing, should I say, the theme of previous months. This is actually a bit of an improvement over February, but pretty much continuing the theme of what we saw in November and December. But speaking of Intel, we do actually have one last thing to finish up on, and that is their Optane Persistent Memory. Now this was announced the other day, if you haven't seen my video on this, do give it a watch because there is a ton of information also about the Xeon 9200 as well, so go give that a look see if you're at all interested, all the specs and everything I discussed is there, but one thing we did not know at the time was the price and now we actually have the pricing confirmed as it is now available for pre-order. So for a 128GB stick of Intel Optane Persistent Memory it is going to cost you $842 and $2,461 for a 256GB stick. Now again, this is for quite a bit. Again, 128GB and 256GB, so they're not exactly cheap. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to sugarcoat, they're not cheap. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, your support really does mean a huge deal to both myself and Paul. Do remember to like and subscribe haven't done so already it does help out a great deal and i'll see you next time